All right, well, thanks a lot, Sharif. It's great to uh, be able to describe to you here what's going on in 5G NR. So if we look at, here we are, MWC 2017, what's changed in the last year? The reality is a lot of change. We've moved through the 3GP release 14 study item. So now we have a lot of decisions that have been made. For example, advanced LDBC channel codes, new low latency slot structure, you know, moving to higher order modulation, getting in the, you know, the OFDM based waveforms on the downlink and the uplink. So the aspect here of designing a wideband TDD optimized air interface for sub six gigahertz and then also for millimeter wave. So one of the exciting here in terms of 5G and our mobile broadband is the fact that on our prototype platform, we have now implemented, uh, based on the release 14 decisions, the E node B and the UE, that is the base station and the device, such that we can have that downlink transmission and the uplink transmission working together. So when we showcase this here on our plot, one of the things we're talking about is, well, what makes 5G and R different than LTE? And so one of the points is that in 5G, we have what we refer to as the self-contained integrated subframe. And what that refers to is here, as part of the scalable numerology, 5G and R will support, for example, 15 kilohertz, 30 kilohertz, 60 kilohertz, 120 kilohertz. So whereas LTE was 15 kilohertz, for 5G and R sub six, we might use 30 kilohertz for a macrocellular deployment. We might use 120 kilohertz for millimeter wave. Here on this 500 microsecond subframe, we begin with the downlink control, and then we have the data portion that can be downlink or uplink, followed by a guard, and then a sounding signal and an act. So the user is actually able to do that fast, low latency processing. So all that horsepower we have in the device, what enables us to do gigabit LTE today is also what enables us to process data quickly to turn around that transmission time. So for example, our prototype system is already implementing this fast turnaround to be able to send the act transmission. And at the same time, based on the base station processing, it can also do fast processing and enable that retransmission. So showing here, we wanted to find a picture of what shows us what's different about the 5G NR. So we're showcasing here the downlink control in green, the downlink data in yellow, and we should mention this is dynamic TDD. It could be downlink or uplink based on being able to switch direction in terms of having that downlink transmission versus an uplink transmission, as opposed to having a fixed downlink uplink config. So what we're showcasing here is having the downlink control. This is in yellow, the downlink data, and then we have a short gap while we switch from transmission now, now we're transmitting this uplink sounding signal. That's how the base station can estimate the received channel based on reciprocity. So instead of feeding back channel coefficients, you can listen on the uplink and transmit on the downlink. So that fast, low latency processing allows the network with massive MIMO to translate 5 dnr into enhanced capacity as well as user data rate and coverage. If we look at a scenario, for example, full buffer users, I'll just click here on that view. We can now look at a cellular distribution where, for example, we have a sector serving 10 users. Here's our live user. So as we mentioned, we have that prototype user. This is operational real time, 200 milliseconds ago in San Diego, data coming, fiber optic cable under the ocean, showing up here live on our demonstration. And then these other users are evaluated based on the 3GP model incorporating massive MIMO. And what we're showcasing here is that 5 dnr can offer this capacity gain. So if we look, for example, in the corner here, what can 5 dnr massive MIMO do? Not only are we increasing peak rates, we're also increasing the median throughput. This is the average user in the cell uh, getting over a 3x gain, as well as the cell edge throughput getting a 3x gain. So one of the important parts for operators who are looking at 5 dnr sub-6 is, hey, how can I deploy this reusing my LTE cell sites. That's why it's important that we're getting that cell edge gain, basically raising the edge cell performance and the median performance even higher. That's when the 5G and our new applications are gonna be coming, when you can raise that floor across the network. That user experience is higher for a large number of users. And so here we're showcasing that, how we can drive that cell edge performance gain. And that's very important, for example, if we look at a particular you know, outdoor user, and then you can look at you know, the sort of uh, data rate and, and number of ranks. So this is a little technical, but we're showcasing here the fact with NR Massive MIMO, we can have that increase in data rate and the fact that the base station is able to serve multiple users at the same time. That so is a, rank eight, so eight spatial layers of eight, data. Eight spatial layers that can be split across users as well as multiple antennas per user. So if I have you know four by four MIMO at the UE, right. this could be a mix of, of users getting higher rank and then also a mix of serving multiple users at the same time in the same spectrum. And then another way to look at that, uh, if we look at, at the fact is, well, what happens in bursty traffic? Many simulations are done in full buffer where everyone's downloading traffic at the same time. 
in a bursty scenario where the applications are more uh, basically depending on the data, the data burst is happening. As you're serving users in different sectors, the data rate gets even higher because the other sectors can be less loaded as they're quickly serving different users. So the interference environment changes. Here we're showcase, showing examples of data rates even higher than two gigabits per second in certain scenarios. So this aspect of how 5G and R can enable these higher data rates in a bursty environment and then also enable those edge cell performance gains. So going back to the fact that we have this live user, this kind of takes us to the point of well, what's really exciting about MWC 2017. So here we are, we have the release 14 study item just wrapping up, incorporating those decisions on our 5G and our prototype. So at Qualcomm, not only are we designing 5G, bringing those into, this, into the standardization, we're also implementing it as we speak on our 5G and our prototype. And at the same time, what's more important is that we're also delivering those product launches now. So Qualcomm announced the SDX50, um, basically family of products addressing 5G and R both sub six gigahertz and millimeter wave, non-standalone and standalone. So all those portions of release 15 are being incorporated into the SDX 50 to enable 2019 launches and 2020 deployments. So it's this aspect of the timeline for 5G and R being accelerated both on a 3GP standpoint as well as on a product availability standpoint. We're seeing this operator pull now in many different regions to look at 5G and R, sub six gigahertz and millimeter wave and to take these prototype designs into efficient silicon implementations as well as RFIC implications. So it's a very exciting year here at MWC 17. And when we come back MWC 18 next year, the key point is we're using this prototype platform to have even further compliance as we move through the release 15 work item. So we'll be further incorporating those changes on this prototype platform such that we can do interop testing and turn this prototype platform into an integrated circuit into handset devices coming in 2019. So a very exciting year and we look forward to seeing you guys again next year. Thank you. Great, thanks John. All right.